Hey everyone, it's Sarah Threadster, NurseRN.com, and in this video, we're going to be doing an NCLEX review comparing acute glomerulonephritis versus nephrotic syndrome. And this video is part of an NCLEX review series over the renal system, so be sure to check out those videos. And as always, at the end of this YouTube video, you can access the quiz that will test you on these conditions. So let's get started. First, let's start out talking about acute glomerulonephritis. Okay, what is happening in this condition? Well, what's happening is that there is inflammation of the glomerulus. And what is the glomerulus? It is part of your nephron, and each kidney contains millions of nephrons, and it is very vital in helping filter your blood. It receives all this fresh blood from the heart, it goes through the glomerulus and then the substances leak down into Bowman's capsule. And normally what leaks down are ions, water, and waste. And your body will take and pick and choose what it wants to go back into circulation and what it doesn't and it'll exit the body as urine. Now normally the glomerulus is not permeable to blood cells and proteins. So keep that in mind. So in this condition, it's became permeable to red blood cells and protein. And the amount of protein that is lost is mild compared to nephrotic syndrome. So with nephrotic syndrome, what's happening? Well, we have changes to the glomerulus. So the glomerulus is not working how it's supposed to. And it causes a massive amount of proteins to be lost. So to help you remember when you're trying to compare the two, I remember nephrotic has an O in it, and that reminds me that there's only one substance that is lost in this condition, and it's proteins. I remember the O in proteins. So red blood cells are not lost in here, only proteins, and it's a lot of them. Compared to over here, it's a mild amount. So now let's look at the main cause. With acute glomerulonephritis, what causes it? Main cause is a post-streptococcal infection. So the patient gets strep, maybe didn't get treated or wasn't treated appropriately, and it shows up about 14 days after that infection. It can be of the skin or of the throat. And it tends to affect the pediatric population, ages two to 10. So if you're in pediatric nursing right now, you're probably studying this condition. And what is happening, and it's really interesting, is that the body has actually created these antigen antibody complexes to help fight that strep bacteria. And what happens is that these antibody antigen complexes collect in the glomeruli and it congests it and it inflames it, which allows these red blood cells and proteins to leak through. So in a sense, it's not really the strep bacteria in the glomerulus causing it, it's the body's ability from where it's created those antigen antibody complexes doing it. Now with nephrotic syndrome, what's happened is that there's changes to the glomeruli and they're not 100% sure why there's changes to the glomeruli. It's idiopathic, it's unknown. But one of the most common diseases that can cause nephrotic syndrome is called minimal change disease. And this is where they will biopsy the glomeruli, look at those, and they look, under, look at them under an electron microscope, which is one of the strongest microscopes. And they see that there's these changes there that are allowing all these proteins to leak into the urine. And it tends to affect, again, pediatric population ages two to five years old. Now, other things can cause this as well, secondary causes, and this is where diseases are affecting the function of the kidney, and this can be from lupus, diabetes, heart failure, etc. Now, with acute glomerulonephritis, remember, we only lost, we're losing red blood cells and mild amount of protein. Now, from nephrotic syndrome, we're losing those massive amounts of proteins, and we're losing various types. The main type of protein that we're losing is called albumin, and because we are losing so much in our urine, it's gonna deplete our blood from albumin. And you're gonna see here in a second with our signs and symptoms why, since we're losing so much albumin, it causes 
these unique signs and symptoms from that. Now, other things that can be lost are immunoglobulins, which help fight infection. So your patient is gonna be at risk for infection. And they can also lose proteins that help decrease clot formation. So if you're losing proteins in your urine that are decreasing clot formation, the patient is at risk for developing these random clots. Okay, now let's look at the signs and symptoms of these conditions and how they differ between each other. First, let's look at acute glomerulonephritis. Now remember, what's happening in this condition is that these antigen antibody complexes have congregated in this glomeruli, it's inflaming it and making it permeable to red blood cells and proteins. Now, your glomerulus filters the blood and if you have some complexes in there inflaming it, congesting it, what is gonna to happen to the ability of that glomeruli to filter the blood? It is going to decrease. So you're gonna get a decrease GFR, glomerular filtration rate. Now, that's gonna to lead to some things. What's that gonna to lead to? It's gonna to lead to hypertension, more blood volume. The body is not, the kidneys are not removing the excess of water from the body. It's gonna stay there. Then you're gonna get where you're gonna lose proteins. And here in a second, you're gonna see how protein, specifically albumin, plays a role in regulating your oncotic pressure. So you're gonna be getting more fluid in the body. Another thing is you're gonna get increased waste in the blood, specifically BUN and creatinine, because the kidneys, those glomeruli, aren't able to remove the waste from the blood and put it in the urine so it can be voided out. And another thing is your urine is going to look abnormal because you're losing those red blood cells. So it'll tint the urine to maybe look like a cola colored or tea colored urine. So to help you remember these signs and symptoms, let's remember the mnemonic had strep because that is one of the reasons of this condition. Okay, H for hypertension and again that is because of that decrease, GFR, the extra blood volume in there, kidneys aren't working appropriately. However, in nephrotic syndrome, hypertension is rare. This is a lot more common with this condition, so remember that. These little red asterisks that you're seeing, these are really the big, glaring, different signs and symptoms that you're gonna see in this condition compared to nephrotic syndrome. Another thing, a for ASO, which is an anti-streptolysin titer. It will be positive, and this is just a test used to test for strep. And if they test positive for strep, then, and they have this condition, most likely because of strep. D for decreased GFR, and again, whenever you have a decreased ability of that glomerulus to filter that blood, what's gonna happen? You're not gonna be producing as much urine as you should because there's it can't filter. So you'll have low urinary output with this condition. Now if that happens, as a nurse, you really wanna monitor the potassium level because the body is not able to excrete potassium normally and it can build up causing hyperkalemia. S for swelling in the face and the eyes. This can be mild, the edema tends to be a little bit more mild than compared to nephrotic syndrome and it can be worse in the morning, especially in the face. T for tea colored urine, again, that cola colored urine, and that's because of that hematuria. R for recent strep infection. E for elevated BUN and creatinine, and again, that's tied back to that decreased GFR because the kidneys aren't able to filter the blood normally, so the waste products build up. And then, of course, last part, P for proteinuria. And keep in mind that the proteinuria is going to be mild compared to nephrotic syndrome. Now let's look at nephrotic syndrome sign and symptoms. Okay, with this, again, we're losing massive amounts of proteins and we're losing mainly albumin, but we can be losing those other proteins that help us fight infection and decrease clot formation. So, proteinuria, they will have massive proteinuria because they're gonna be losing three grams or more of protein per day, and that is a lot of protein. Now, because of that, the urine is gonna have this unique look to it. It can be foamy and frothy urine, and the urine can have this like dark color, like a dark yellow to it. Now, because we've lost so much protein in the urine, what's gonna to happen to our protein level, specifically albumin, 
in the blood, it's gonna decrease. So you're gonna get hypoalbuminemia. And whenever you get low albumin levels in the blood, the liver says, hey, I've gotta make some more albumin, we're low. So the liver tries to make more albumin thinking it helps, but whenever it does that, it increases our lipid levels as well, like triglycerides and cholesterol. So the patient will have hyperlipidemia, which looks sort of funny on your pediatric patients who should not be having hyperlipidemia. Now, also that low albumin level, level is going to lead to edema, a lot more edema, which is gonna to lead to noticeable weight gain in this condition than compared to acute glomerulonephritis, because remember, it's mild protein we're losing. And it can be in the face, around the eyes, it will progress to the extremities, the legs, the ankles, the hands, and the abdomen causing ascites. Now, why is a low albumin level causing so much fluid to go into the interstitial tissue, which will present as edema? Well, albumin plays a very important role in regulating oncotic pressure. So let's talk about that. Okay, so here's like a capillary, and your capillaries have fenestrations, which are little pores that allow substances to flow in and out from the capillary to the interstitial tissue. Well, here in the brown, those are our albumin. And albumin and water, they're like a magnet together. Albumin regulates how much water really is gonna flow out of the capillary into the interstitial tissue. Now, if the albumin levels start dropping and going away, you don't have anything, water doesn't have anywhere to go. So instead of staying there, because that's what albumin does is it keeps it with him, is it will cause the water to go out into the interstitial tissue because there is no albumin there to regulate it. Then you will get the swelling in the interstitial tissue and that's why you will see that. Okay, now let's look at the main nursing concerns based on each condition because depending on what the patient has, we're gonna focus on certain areas. Okay, so for acute glomerulonephritis, remember the patient can have hypertension. So we want to monitor their blood pressure and the physician may prescribe antihypertensive drugs to bring that blood pressure down or diuretics as well, depending on if their renal status is sufficient enough since diuretics act on the nephrons of the kidneys. Another thing is we wanna monitor that fluid status closely, specifically their I's and O's, especially that output. Are they putting out the normal amount that a child should put out, which is one milliliter per kilogram per hour, depending on their weight, or at least 30 cc's an hour if it's an adult? Because remember, they have a decreased GFR, which as it decreases, they can enter into renal failure and you'll wanna notify the doctor if that urinary output is not sufficient enough. Then you wanna monitor that potassium level because the body is not excreting the potassium and it can lead to hyperkalemia. Also assessing their swelling, is it decreasing or is it getting worse? Because with this condition, we're really worried about their renal function. Next, limiting sodium and Following a fluid restriction diet, again, just because of all the swelling they have going on, we'll wanna watch that. And if they have low, in, low urinary output, you'll wanna limit their consumption of foods high in potassium. And with this condition, relapse is not as common as with nephrotic syndrome, but you'll wanna teach the patient how to monitor for future strep infections and how you can go to your physician's office and get a simple culture and they can test to see if you have strep of either your skin or your throat. Now let's look at our nursing concerns for nephrotic syndrome. Okay, with this, we're also gonna monitor our fluid status and our swelling. One thing you wanna keep in mind is that the physician may order diuretics along with IV albumin, which is gonna help decrease that swelling. How's that gonna help? Well, we know our blood level is low in albumin, so putting albumin back into the blood will help start regulating oncotic pressure. So put albumin back in the blood, hopefully water will come back into that capillary from the interstitial tissue, and the diuretic can work on the kidneys to help remove that excessive water in the system. Another thing is we wanna monitor these patients for infection because they're at risk compared to if they had AGN, acute glomerulonephritis, especially around those areas that are swollen. When you have 
edematous areas, they're at risk for breakdown because these patients are gonna have a lot more swelling than compared to over here. So watch that. Also, one of the treatments is corticosteroids or an immune suppressor. And this will help decrease the amount of protein that is being lost in the urine and help prevent relapse because relapse can happen with this condition. Also, you'll want to assess them for blood clots because remember they're losing various proteins, those immunoglobulins, which help with infection and the proteins that help decrease clot formation. So you'll want to assess their skin, their extremities, make sure they're not red, swollen, or painful, which could represent a deep vein thrombosis or a pulmonary embolism. So you'll want to look at that respiratory status. Another thing is diet. You'll be limiting per physician's order, consumption of sodium, fluid restriction, and if they're experiencing that hyperlipidemia, you'll want to limit their fat consumption as well, so a low-fat diet. Then you'll want to educate the patient or the parents about the risk of relapse because this can happen with this condition and how to monitor for it. So performing daily weights every day, making sure you're not gaining weight, getting over-the-counter kits to test your urine for protein and things like that. Okay, so that wraps up this lecture on acute glomerulonephritis versus nephrotic syndrome. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to take the free quiz and to subscribe to our channel for more videos.